Hello learners, welcome to this video lecture series. I am Junali Deka, faculty in the Department of Mass Communication and Journalism, Tejpur University. Welcome to today's topic that is uh, writing for science communication. As you know that science communication is an emergent discipline and in today's time it is very important to understand science and also to know what science is doing in the fields of technology, in the fields of medicine, in the fields of health, everything. So the objective of today's video lecture is to give you an understanding of what is basically science communication and how to write for science communication. Because for writing science communication, you need to have certain skills, you need to know certain uh, prerequisites so that you can impart a very good science communication information to the common people. So as I said that these days science communication, it's an emergent discipline in the field of both sciences and also social sciences. There is a myth that science communication is only meant for uh, scientists or it is only meant for people who are in the science field. But it is not the case because the government of India is also promoting non-science departments or the uh, disciplines to impart science education. So you can see that there has been recent policies and recent uh, there have been activities where it has been encouraged to use science and to make science for everyday life. It should not be that science should be inside laboratory, science should be inside those uh, sophisticated equipment and the chemicals, but it should be within the, the parameters of a society. As I said that there has been a constant uh, drive by the government and also by the non-government organization to disseminate awareness towards science communication. For instance, events like science exhibitions, fairs and festivals are a few common initiatives by the government of India to popularize science communication, primarily among the science uh, school going children and also both in the rural and the urban setting. However, the contribution of Indian scientists towards development of science are not neither new nor old. So you must be wondering, uh, dear learners, that science communication is very difficult or you must be thinking that science communication is something which you need to have a specialized uh, uh, degree or a diploma. But uh, you do not necessarily need those degrees. If you have, then it's good. What primarily you need for writing for science communication is the understanding of the society. You need to understand what society is, what society needs. And in that process only, uh, you will be able to impart that education to the common people. Now, these days you must have seen that there are issues like menstruation issues. There are issues like uh, gender disparity, you, you must have seen issues like the sanitation primarily in, in, the, in rural settings in India. In that case, what has happened is that people think that uh, sanitation has nothing to do with science. Sanitation has something to do with my own uh, locality. Sanitation has to do something with my own uh, family tradition. But sanitation itself is something that is related to science. That is the reason why uh, you must have seen movies like Toilet, Ek Prem Katha, you must have seen movies like Padman, which have somewhere tried to uh, inform people and also uh, leave a strong message among the common people that these are the issues that one should take it very seriously. Whether it is the member of, uh, whether uh, it's a female member of a family or it's a male member of a family, but they should know about this basic needs of understanding why health is so important and health is related with science communication. Now coming to the important topic that what do you understand by science communication? I, in my lecture, I want to focus on as, as a communication process. Uh, you must have known that communication is a process and communication needs to be done in, within, a, within a defined structure. Uh, in my lecture, I would like to make it in a, in, in a more simpler and a, uh, in a little different way. When we say science, 
uh, or when we say communication for science, we generally understand that we have to communicate science for people. So we can find out here there are three W's that is what, whom and why and also one H that is how. Now for example, what is to communicate about science? Why? Why we need to communicate somebody about science and whom to communicate about science? So these are the very three important questions that we must understand. We must question ourselves and then only we can actually fulfill our objective. Uh, and how can we communicate science? Is it so easy or is it so difficult that we go to someone and say that you should practice this and they will follow it? No, it doesn't happen like that. That's why I said it's very important that you first understand the society, the cultural practices, the traditions and everything and then only you can impart the science education. Now the very idea of looking in these questions uh, gives us a fair understanding of ways of communicating science with both science and non-science audience. In communication studies, we generally consider the important elements in the process of communication. That is, we have a specific sender, we have a message, we have channel, we have receiver, we have noise, and we also consider the element of feedback. Now, similarly, in the same situation happens in the science communication. We explain the same elements to understand the process of communication. So let us have that uh, break up here. Who is the sender? The sender is the one who thinks and chooses to send an information to an individual or to a group or to a masses. Message, it is the information or the idea to be sent to an individual group or mass. Channel is the medium through which message will be sent to an individual group or you can say mass. Receiver is the person or the persons who receives the message. Noise, it can be any barrier or it can be any hindrance in sending the information. Feedback, it is basically the response or the reaction of the message uh, of the receiver. So in case of science communication, all the elements play a vital role as each element will determine the effectiveness of the process of communication. Now let us understand uh, this simple process with an example. Suppose sender here is the government of India who wants to send a message on Swachh Bharat Abhijan or the Swachh Bharat mission through a newspaper advertisement. The channel or the medium to illiterate sections of the society and the intended receivers will be the, the rural section. This means sender choose to send a message through a channel for a selected group of receivers only. The government of India wants to send this information about Swachh Bharat mission to the illiterate group of people or to the rural group of people. So there is a specified uh, message, there is a specified number of receivers. Unfortunately, in this situation, the message on Swachh Bharat mission has been decided for only illiterate people. And the medium which has been chosen for this is the newspaper advertisement. So dear learners, you can understand what is the problem here. Because when we say illiterate section of the society, they are, not going to, uh, they are not going to understand or they are not going to read newspapers. So there itself is a problem. We have chosen a medium which is not suitable for this group of intended audience. Yes, so there is a problem in the selection of the channel and the receiver. As illiterate masses cannot read newspapers, so the message on Swachh Bharat mission won't be delivered to the intended receivers or the audience. And we call it to be a noise, anything that acts as a barrier in the process of sending and receiving message. So this is itself is a problem, it's a noise. So in this situation, inappropriate channel for a selected group of receivers have led to an ineffective communication. Therefore, success of the communication process depends on each element and similarly, in science communication, one must follow the same principle. You have to be very careful in designing the process that who will be the sender, who will be your receivers, what channel you are going to use, which medium you are going to use. And, and at the same time, you also have to interpret or you need to identify that what could be the possible noises. Sometimes the message fails to reach to the receivers or 
received messages are decoded differently. You cannot be so confident or you cannot be so sure that whatever you have sent, what sort of information you have sent to the receivers, they are going to get the same response because every individual is different and every individual understand or decode the message in a different way. So we can understand that feedback helps in identifying the effectiveness of each element. So taking into instance this example of Swachh Bharat mission, if the rural people, they were not able to understand the message what the government wanted to pass, then this entire process is a failure. And that has been a common phenomenon or a, a process that has happened in India in terms of rural science communication. Because there has been always a gap, there has been a, a, a proper uh, say miscommunication between what the sender wants to send and what the receiver understand because their frames of references are different. The sender thinks that everyone will understand uh, what they want to say and the receivers on the other side they fail to understand what the sender is saying. So it has to be a, a very equal proportion between a sender and a receiver then only the process of communication or especially the science communication go in a very effective manner. Now uh, coming to the communication for science, uh, you have understood the process of communication. Uh, let us understand the communication for science as the name suggests. Communication for science is very specific and it has a specific purpose. You cannot uh, give every information in the name of science communication you have to be very very specific because you want to uh, impart information on a particular issue on a particular event so it is a very specific it has got a very specific purpose the idea behind science communication is to impart scientific knowledge and temperament among masses through various means of communication so you have to uh, impart the scientific knowledge and also temperament uh, at the same time, one should uh, know this and one should think about it that it's not that people who are living in the rural areas or people who are living in, uh, say, uh, in an illiterate you know, section of the society, they, they do not understand science or they do not uh, know what science is. The only thing is the, the application or the implications of the science, they are not able to maybe relate or they, they do not uh, want to relate it because they have their own way of dealing with the day-to-day -day life science. And science communication also helps to allow scientific reasoning and understanding. In India, there has been a historic practice of using traditional knowledge more than the scientific knowledge. Because if you see the history, you will find that the the traditional practices are more popular than the scientific processes. So if you see the history of our medicinal uh, field, medicine field, you will see that uh, people uh, have been using more of Ayurveda or more of the home remedies rather than consulting uh, a physician or rather than consulting a doctor. So in that case what happens is that they are more into this traditional practice. If you have a stomach ache then your mother or your grandmother will give you some tips that take this water or take this piece of lemon like that rather than going to uh, paying a visit to a doctor because those traditional practices or those traditional advices have been uh, they have been uh, more effective in terms of the the remedy or in terms of getting relief from that particular problem so uh, the traditional practices we cannot say that those are wrong but at the same time uh, with time we need to also think about the the scientific outlook See, for example, this recent outbreak of coronavirus. We all know about coronavirus and we think that coronavirus is, uh, is something related to virus, it is something related to uh, dangerous virus, but at the same time we are not actually aware of what it is and whether uh, should we stop eating chicken, whether we should stop taking fish, is it going to help? Shall we cover our, uh, ma uh, cover our face with the mask? That, is that going to help? Now why this confusion and uh, say misunderstanding about this you know, particular uh, disease that is the coronavirus because we are not 
reading or maybe because we are not aware or we are not informed about what exactly is coronavirus. So uh, we are reading in newspapers and we are reading in the tele uh, we are seeing in the television that uh, that it is spreading even in India some cases have been found they have been tested positive but we still if we, we if you ask somebody they will say that yeah it is a virus which is spreading it is dangerous apart from that maybe our answer is not more than that so that is the point when there is a need for actually informing educating people through scientific reasoning and logic. So dear learners, you must have understood by now that there is a process of communication which takes place in science communication also. And this elements which are there in the process of communication, whether it is a sender, the message channel or the receiver, they all work together. And that is the reason why we finally get a proper communication. Uh, Coming to the most important part of our today's topic that is writing for science communication. Now we, we must have read some magazines on science, we must have read some articles on science articles in newspapers. Have you ever wondered who has written those articles and uh, why it is so important to read those articles or why somebody is writing those articles for you or for me? Uh, because that is the way of popularizing science with some popular writings. So suppose if someone writes an article, a science article on coronavirus, the precautions that you need to take on coronavirus, that itself is a scientific writing or itself is an example of your writing for science. Now the question comes is that can any, anybody or uh, can anybody write a note on science communication or they can write uh, a piece on science communication? The answer is yes, yes, but there are certain conditions. You can write a piece on science communication provided you have interest in science. Second, you have well uh, equipped knowledge about the, about the issue that you want to write. You should have done a proper research on that and you should also be able to connect the issue with the society. Mostly what happens is that we, we think that if it, is a, if it is something about space or if it is something about some technology, it is happening outside our own parameters. We are not concerned unless and until if the, the article is about a new mobile handset or an, it's an article about a new laptop, then only we are interested. But at the same time, there have been a lot of scientific technological uh, developments, there have been a lot of inventions and discoveries that are taking place around the country, around the world. And if an article on that development or on that invention comes up, that is for the benefit of the common people. Whether you are interested in science or not, but science always tries to inform people what is happening. And it is the job of those science writers who actually take the responsibility to keep us informed about these developments. Now coming to the, the topic of our writing for science communication, there, has, there needs to be have, there need to be have certain qualities for science writer. So when we say science writer, so basically science writer are those who write regularly on science issues. So these people are trained, they are specialized in writing science issues. And one needs to be well informed about the science also and if you have a degree on science or if you have done your uh, studies in the science then it's a beneficial because you will be able to articulate the issue in that scientific manner. So what basically needs is that scientific approach. A science writer should have knowledge about all the latest development in the field of science and technology. He or she uh, should be well versed with the issues, good command over language, must under understand the audience, able to write in simple and effective manner, knows the subject properly, good communication skills, good presence of mind, cares for society and most importantly is to be creative. So moving to the qualities for a science writer as we have discussed. And out of that, one very important point is that command over language. It is not necessary that you'll have to only write in English or in Hindi. 
you can also write it in your own mother tongue or in the original language. And uh, that is where the, the, the myth is that you should always write in English to be a popular science writer or to be a, a very effective science writer. That is not the case. You can write it in your own uh, language and the command is more important. And what is more important is that what you are trying to say and how you are going to say it to the masses. And also, you, as I said, that you must understand the audience. It's very important. Suppose you want to impart or you want to educate or you want to inform uh, something about science communication to a rural audience. Then in that, in that case, you have to be very uh, careful in uh, passing the information because they will be using their own dialect, they will be using their own language. So in that case, if your medium of instruction is in English, then it is a failure. And uh, also you need to understand their own cultural and traditional practices. So suppose you want to impart science education on how to use sanitation or uh, whether you should have toilets at houses, uh, that, that community, suppose it's a tribal community, they may not accept your views, they may not accept what you want to say. The reason is that they must have been doing it for the over the ages. They have their own way of uh, uh, believing or understanding the concept of sanitation. So it is difficult. So without actually hurting anyone's sentiment or without hurting anyone's own practices, but you have to impart that scientific temperament among those masses or among those users. And when you are writing for science, it has to be very, very simple. It has to be very, very uh, easy to understand. You should not complicate your language. You should not confuse your readers, what you actually want to say or uh, why science communication. And you should also have a good presence of mind because suppose you are working in the field for some science related workshop or if you're working for some science related activities, then you should also see whether the people are interested or not. You should have uh, to observe carefully their, their approach, their interest on the subject. So the presence of mind is very much required for writing that issue. You are reporting some uh, festival, you are reporting some cultural event and also the, the scientific implication on that, then your presence of mind is very much important. What is that extra that you are going to add that makes the write-up more interesting? And you need to be very, very creative. Sometimes or generally what happens is that it is considered that the science subjects are very boring or they are very dull. But that is the challenge where this that the topic is of science but you need to make it very very creative and you need to make it very very interesting uh, in even in schools and colleges you must have seen that there are some science magazines there are some journals that they regularly publish and that is actually one way of involving students uh, the learners to keep writing and keep practicing on writing certain small issues and I think that is the beginning where you will understand whether your writing, whether your thoughts are coming out properly or not, whether, whether it has been liked by people or not, whether you are satisfied with your own content or not. So dear learners, the, 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 thumb of the, the rule of the thumb is that you have to keep writing and uh, see whatever topic that you have selected should be interesting for the readers and it should also have the scientific reasoning and the logic so that people will take your ideas into more scientific way.